This is WPSL Port St. Lucie, the talk of the Treasure Coast. Kid. Views expressed on the following program are not necessarily those of WPSL. However, we do encourage you to like and share them on Facebook. It's time for Joanne's World of Nutrition. Brought to you by Nutrition World. Right across from City Hall in downtown Fort Pierce. And now, introducing the host of the show, Joanne Seeger. Well, good morning, everyone. Happy Thursday. I hope everyone's having an incredible morning. I am so lucky this morning. I have the most special guest on the planet. My very own beautiful and talented and smart daughter, Elena. Good morning, Elena. Uh, how are you doing this morning? I'm good. All right, tell the audience how old you are now. I'm 10 years old. Yeah, we have a lot of customers that knew you from when you were just born at the store when we were located in Sable Palm. It's been 10 long years that you've had a journey with Mommy in our health food store. Is that exciting? Do you like being the daughter of a mommy with a health food store? Yes. Yeah, you like it? Sometimes, right? Sometimes you might not like it, all the, all the health food talk, right? <laughs> all right, well, Elena, we start every show with a breathing exercise because Cliff is an expert counter. He can count to five like no other. I grew up so watching Sesame Street. I can count really That's nice. right. <laughs> so what we do is we exhale out for five. And oh no, I'm sorry. We exhale out the drama, the frustration, right. the anxiety, all the moodiness. Not that you ever have moodiness, my lovely child. <laughs> but And then we're going to inhale only using our nose for five, hold for five, and exhale through our nose for five. And let's do this three times, Cliff. And we'll mm -hmm. just help the audience just kind of get in charge of their day, lower their blood pressure a bit, lower their stress uh, cortisol levels, and just, you know, um, feel better about the day. Just remember, if you're driving, do not close your yeah. eyes if you're driving. You can close your eyes if you're sitting at home. Uh, yeah, I in. love not only closing my eyes but tapping the tips of my fingertips. It's very meditative, and it definitely brings down the blood pressure and the anxiety. Um, this is really, really therapeutic. So uh, let's do this. Exhale, okay. everyone. Elena, Everybody exhale out any stress or nervousness that you might be feeling right now. Let it all okay, out. Okay, let it all out. We're going to start through okay, the nose. Okay, here we go. One, two, three, four, five. Hold. Two, three, four, five. Release. Two, three, four, five. Again. Two, three, four, five. Hold. Two, three. Three, four, five. Release. Two, three, four. One more time. One, two, three, four, five. Hold. Two, three, four, five. Release. Two, three, four, five. Awesome. Thank you, feel Cliff. Better? Elena, how do you feel? I feel good. You feel good? I know it's tough for you because you, like many children, are what they call mouth breathers. They have a tendency to always use their mouth, um, which um, does have a couple problems associated with dry mouth. Um, so it can lead to issues with sinus uh, cavity, dryness, allergies, um, not enough rest or sleep. Um, and also um, the teeth can... Um, have some issues so you always want to try to breathe through the nose only um, what's a trick that you can do Elena to help you breathe through the nose what's something that you can do um, okay. you used to laugh at mommy when I used to do this with you you put a piece of tape oh. over your lips yeah she <laughs> used to put a piece of tape over my lips and she used to make me breathe out of my nose that's right, and, and it's hard at first, right? But if there are a lot of YouTube videos that show that you can um, tape your mouth and practice breathing through your nose, even if it's for just one or two minutes a day, and not only will it help prevent the dry mouth, um, but it'll also help your cardiovascular system, your immune system, your stress levels. 
So if you feel like you're a mouth breather, this is a good trick for you. And also too, a lot of us don't realize we're doing very shallow mouth breathing until you do the trick with the tape over your lips and then realize um, that the tape is starting to move and you didn't even realize it. So give that a uh, give that a try. All right, Elena, so real loud and clear right in the microphone, tell all our listeners what the topic of the day is. Top five things you could do for your health versus kids and adults. That's right. So we're going to talk about the five most popular um, issues that we have in our family. And so, you know, I know um, there are definitely extra challenges we have going on right now, especially since homeschooling started you know, um, in March, and so we're spending a lot of time with our children at home. So I thought these tips really represented things we're dealing with on a daily basis. So I'm going to start off because I feel like my number one applies to both adults and children. And I know my listeners have probably heard it over and over and over again, just like the breathing tip, but I can't help it because we're still not doing it. So it is drinking enough water. So water, water, water. Um, We really have to drink enough to make our body work efficiently. Our body is about 71 to 72% water, just like the earth. No coincidence there. So we need to have water to help our immune systems, our detoxification, to not only make every new cell, but to get rid of cells that are on their way out. We need it for our brain function, our eyesight, our metabolism, um, our bowel movement. It's critical for our energy levels. No um, step happens in the human body without hydration. Our connective tissue, our synovial tissue, our lymphatic system is all based on moisture. Um, So it's critical. And I have this really easy rule um, that you just do a tiny little bit of water, about four to six ounces, every hour you're awake. That way you don't overwhelm your bladder. You don't have to worry about that urge to rush to the bathroom. But it is important that you don't just slug a bunch of water in the beginning or end of your day and call it good. Um, It's critical that your body has good quality water every hour it's awake. Now, if you're working outdoors or if you're um, exercising a lot or just sweating a lot, then bring that number up to more like eight ounces instead of four to six. And if you absolutely hate water and you're choosing um, unhealthy beverages instead, try doing fruits or vegetables that have water content in it. Um, Don't avoid the most important um, nutrient in the body, which is water. All right, Elena, so for kids, you have a number one. Um, I have to admit that maybe I gave you this idea for number one since you could actually reach a sink by yourself. So what is the number one healthiest things that kids can do right now? Wash hands, feet, underarms, and private parts. All right, so we're stressing those areas because it's not necessary to take a shower or bath every day, right? No. Right, so... Um, so we can do like a little mini shower because I know sometimes like especially you and Scarlett we have a hard time getting you guys motivated to take showers so that's the critical part right and how does mommy feel about antibacterials do you do you remember what my rule is just basic soap and water right not using all those gels no (laughs) all right so So basically, even physicians in hospitals agree that washing thoroughly with just plain old soap and water is definitely better than all these perfumed, alcohol-derived antibacterials. I see them everywhere now. Um, They're made with a lot of chemicals, perfumes, even artificial colors um, and synthetic um, scents. These things wreak havoc on the immune system and and on the endocrine system, the hormonal system, and the alcohol is very dangerous, especially for our little ones. So before you go slathering your little baby with all these antibacterials or put it on your hand and then touch your infants, rethink that. Washing is definitely the best. So grab the hands, put them in nice sudsy water, and rinse them thoroughly before you slather on 
all the chemicals. Um, there are so many great recipes online for great um, natural antibacterial um, sprays or gels. Um, I do one at the store. Unfortunately, I don't have it to si sell right now, but it's basically organic whole leaf aloe, um, some good strong alcohol, and essential oils. And so that way you're not getting the chemicals. So consider, um, you know, dumping the ones that are full of junk and go natural and just wash your hands more versus doing all those gels. All right, so my number two, which I really struggle with this one, um, but I'm really good at telling the kids to do it, is fresh air. So I'm definitely known to hate the heat and humidity and the sunshine. Um, you know, I get so nervous with my light Irish skin. It gets really destroyed by the sun quickly. But I absolutely know for sure that fresh air, vitamin D3, D3 from the sun, is the best way to build your immunity, um, help your mood, and just be healthier overall. So getting fresh air is really critical to good health. And of course, for adults and children, you just need a good 20 minutes first thing in the morning. And then at the end of your day, um, it won't be too dangerous as far as the amount of UV rays that you're getting. And your immune system will thank you for it. Your bone density, you'll sleep better. Um, you'll feel happier. There is proven research that you definitely have a lot more dopamine, serotonin, um, good vibes going through your body with some fresh air. And I know it's hot right now. That's why I stress early morning. All right, Elena, what's something that kids can do for tip number two? Number two, the kids can play and exercise. Ways that you can exercise, you can go on a bike ride. Um, the second thing you can do is go on a mini rebounder. It's It's like... It's like a big trampoline, but it's actually mini, so it's like a smaller trampoline. Um, so where where do we keep the mini trampoline in our house, the mini rebounder? We put it like right in front of the TV. Right, to get your attention. And how long have you been doing this for? A Let while. A while, since you can remember probably. I've had one in the house since you guys could crawl. <laughs> so... All right, that's great exercise. And you love going on that every day you yeah. on with some good music and a show. Yeah. All right, the what else? The third thing is that you can play tag, which kids probably know what this is. But um, it's where you tag somebody, you, like, chase after them. It's, it's a fun game. The fourth thing you could do is do chalk on the sidewalk. And, and you can also swim and dance, which is really fun. I love dancing. I know. You're a great dancer. And and. That's the thing is you can have fun and exercise at the same time. And I noticed with, when the virus started and we have um, right down the block from where we live, a gym teacher for the local school, she started that whole big thing where everyone was doing the chalk on the sidewalks where you would, you know, it's like kind of like what I did growing up, the hopscotch, but much more elaborate, you know, you jump and Elena, do you... Um, do you think that kids will still be doing this when school starts, making, you know, chalk on the sidewalk? Probably, but they will be doing some exercising things at school, too. Yeah, we hope, right, that school has a lot of good recess time, get outside. Yeah, do you miss your friends? Yeah. Yeah, it must be so hard. How did you feel, like, when you started homeschooling? Did it make you well, sad? Well, I was surprised you? because um, that week when... After spring break, it was supposed to be the daddy and daughter dance, so I was kind of upset. Right, I know. You got a new dress and everything, and it made you really sad. Well, luckily, you and daddy can make um, another date for that, right? Because I heard the school is going to get all that stuff back going, so it won't be too long now. Um, do you know, Elena, that in one month, school begins again? Yeah, I do. Yeah, right? <laughs> so, yeah, you miss it now. Wait till it starts. You're going to be like, oh, mom, school again. <laughs> but I'm sure you miss your friends. My brother's birthday is in August. That's right. Your brother's birthday is in August. Yeah, he gets lucky that he usually starts school right on the day of his birthday. It just makes him so happy. <laughs> oh, boy. 
All right, so I guess it's, oh, wait a sec. You forgot to mention one thing about <laughs> exercise. What is something that mommy asks you to do every day to get in your exercise? Mark Cola, three minutes. Tell it nice and loud on the microphone. Mark Cola, three minute yes, workout. The Dr. Mercola three minute workout. If my listeners or if I have any newbies listening, thank you for spending some time with us. Dr. Mercola is definitely one of my favorite people. Um, he has a huge internet presence. He is a famous physician, a super smart guy, and he definitely research, researches everything he speaks about and backs it up with science. And one of the things is his three minute nitric oxide dump workout. It's all over YouTube and it's super simple. Anyone can do it. Um, and it's fun. The kids love doing it. But what he showed, if you do this three-minute workout three times a day, so a total of nine minutes, I call it like playing a song three times, you get an hour's worth of cardiovascular help for your heart. So you're basically benefiting your heart and increasing all the things that need to be increased in the body, the feel-good hormones, um, just helping uh, your serotonin, your dopamine, all those great things with three minutes. And it's super easy, right, Elena? It's like just, um, it's yeah, there's a TV screen on, um, <laughs> on in the studio, Cliff. I don't know, she's getting a little distracted here. <laughs> a typical child, right? <laughs> it's okay, honey. We it, don't have it the happens. rebounder in here. I know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but right so it's it's just four moves with Dr. Mercola. Don't you feel like any child can do it? Yeah. It's super easy. All right. So I guess it's my turn. <laughs> okay. So most adults and children don't like this tip, okay? Um it's you know, it's a tough one, but I can't stress it enough just like the water. We need to eat more vegetables. Um, it was Elena's turn to make dinner last night, and she was ready to make a dinner without a vegetable. <laughs> and then, you know, I it made you made carrots. Yep, you definitely made carrots. Um, but, the, you know, it's tough. We, we forget about vegetables. Um, mm -hmm. It's definitely not on our priority list, but it needs to be. In nature, vegetables are the only thing that alkalizes the human body thoroughly. Lemons and limes do it as well. When they digest, they make alkaline ash. Why is that critical? Because disease cannot exist in an alkaline environment. But unfortunately, stress, anxiety, depression, lack of sleep, pharmaceuticals, all these things um, create acidity in our body where vegetables help neutralize them. I always joke, the government says that we should be doing up to nine servings a day. On average, we're lucky if we get one serving a day. And that's sometimes not even good quality vegetables. We're eating canned vegetables, frozen vegetables, fried vegetables, overcooked vegetables. Um, so we need to focus on getting more vegetables in our diet. And what the best part is, is now all over the internet and on YouTube, you can get growing tips to have gardens at home. And it's a great thing to do with your children, to bond with them. Um, you can do a hydroponic garden inside. Even if you just grow fresh herbs, herbs are super beneficial and you can add them to your dishes. Um, support your local markets, go to your farmer's markets, um, reach out. Sometimes they even have community gardens. In Florida, it's tough this time of year to grow too much because, you know, it's super hot. But l look for a way to make um, eating vegetables fun. Elena, what is your favorite vegetable? My favorite vegetable is, I think, carrot. Carrots? Okay. Yeah, your stepdad constantly says that, right? I love fried yeah, carrots. Yeah, if, if you're hungry, go eat a carrot. Well, yeah, so fried carrots are delicious. Some people, it's funny, they love raw carrots and they hate cooked carrots. Or they love cooked carrots and they hate raw. Just, I stress that raw vegetables definitely have more nutrition than when you cook a vegetable. But if you need to blanch it, you know, just put it in a little steaming pot or just like boil it for just a splash. Um, if that helps you consume more, start there. But 
fried vegetables, never a good idea. But what you did last night for the carrots, that really wasn't frying them. You just kind of sauteed them, and they were absolutely delicious. You did a great job. I put some pepper on it. Some pepper, yeah. So it's you can olive oil. Olive oil, great idea, super healthy. So that's the thing. And there are kick kid cooking shows that are available <laughs> for your children to watch. And they proved through research that if your children are involved in the cooking, then they actually will eat more of what you prepared. So get your kids involved. Um, it really helps the mood of the house, so it's not always a parent task. Um, so cooking vegetables, um, eating raw vegetables, even throwing vegetables in a smoothie, um, that is definitely a good idea, okay? So that's my number three, all right? What is your number three? My number three is sleep more. Toddlers. <laughs> you know what's coming on tonight, right? You want oh, <laughs> see the previews. <laughs> toddlers, toddlers need twelve hours of sleep. Okay. Age three to six need ten to twelve hours of sleep. Seven to twelve year olds need ten to eleven hours of sleep. Okay, that sounds like a lot of sleep. So toddlers, okay, so. You know, 12 hours, ages 3 to 6, 10 to 12, and age 7 to 12, 10 to 11. That's a many, many hours. So, Elena, you're 10 years old. How many hours of sleep are you getting a night lately? I'm getting 8 hours of sleep. If you're lucky, 8 hours. <laughs> yeah, she's cowering. So, if anyone's watching by video, they'll see Elena just cowering down with that answer. Yes, um, it's a it's a struggle for us parents, Elena, to get their children to go to sleep. Do you have any tips that you can say nice and loud into the microphone to help us parents put their kids to bed earlier? Oh uh, well, there's many things that you could do. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. <laughs> Are you blanking out on them? Kind of. All right, so. <laughs> Um, what about um, music? I know you love music at yeah. night. Okay, so tell us about that. Wait, things for the kids to go to sleep? Yeah. You? Okay. Oh, no, I know how to go to sleep. Okay. Yeah. So. I was a little confused. So you can listen to music, um, but if you're going to listen to music, you should put it farther away from you so you don't get distracted. And listen to soothing music. So if you listen to the music that you like, you'll be like jamming to it. And then you won't be able to go <laughs> so to sleep. So no dance music when you're trying to go to no. sleep. What's your favorite like sleepy kind of music? Um, I love ocean sounds or Disney piano because I play the piano and I just enjoy listening to it. Right, and there's definitely on all, like I know every, some people listen to Apple Music or Pandora or YouTube. Um, there's a wonderful piano station. Uh, it's called Piano Peace, and that's wonderful to sleep to. And I know the ocean sounds. Um, I know your dad and you both, you guys have the app for the ocean music. Yeah. Yeah, lots of great sleeping apps now. So Alexa you know what has that's. A lot of them. What's that? Alexa. Oh, it has a lot of sleeping apps. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I love it all. I mean, it's just Sleep basically w some version of white noise. Yeah. All right, so that's a great tip. So, you know, make your devices go further away and put some nice white noise. And you also are like me, Elena. You like a fan, yeah, right? I do. So you like, do you like to feel the fan on you or just hear the noise? Both. But I don't like to feel it on me because a lot because in the morning when I wake up, it usually, like, gives me, like, a sore throat. Yes, do you know why that is? Because the cold air the cold air is like I don't know how to explain it, but just try. You're doing great. Uh, it's kinda like going it it makes you a dry mouth. Exactly. You did so good, honey. So yes, yeah, so when you have a fan in the room, um, it's sometimes if you're a mouth breather you will basically not only already be drying out your mouth from breathing through it, but that fan is going to dry it out more so you can aggravate your sinus cavity. Uh, actually, uh, air conditioners, they, they don't cool the air. They remove the moisture from the air. So if you're breathing with your mouth in your sleep, you're apt to wake up with a dry mouth. That's right. Really yeah, and that can really bother you. You know, you're not going to feel as well. You're not going to get a restful sleep. Um, so it's definitely critical that we get enough sleep. 
So when we come back from break, we're going to go into sleep a little bit more, and then I'm going to talk about some tips for adults and children to get a better night's rest. So thanks for listening. We'll be right back. WPTV's first alert weather on WPSL is brought to you by Seacoast Air Conditioning. Family owned and operated on the Treasure Coast since 1982. Online at seacoastair.com. Now with a look at our forecast, here's meteorologist Glenn Glazer. This afternoon, partly sunny with high temperatures in the low to mid 90s and the heat index in the low 100s. And we're going to be close to some record highs today. Winds will be light out of the southwest and rain chances are lower today. But a few showers and thunderstorms are possible this afternoon. I'm WPTV First Alert Meteorologist Glenn Glazer for WPSL 1590, the talk of the Treasure Coast. At Seacoast Air Conditioning, they believe in three basic fundamentals. Answer the phone, show up on time, and fix the problem right the first time. Seacoast Air, family owned and operated since 1982, waiting to answer your call 24-7. Comfort crisis, don't roast, call Seacoast. Hi, this is Joanne from Nutrition World. Just letting all of my listeners know we have been diligent in sanitizing the store and using every precaution possible to keep our customers safe. I am offering free shipping on all orders over $30 if you choose not to come in the store. I am really hoping that all my listeners are taking time right now to get fresh air, to get exercise into their daily routine, keep hydrated, and get the proper amount of sleep. It's critical right now that attitude is everything. To please take time to laugh, to give yourself a break. You can find Nutrition World right on US1 in Fort Pierce, across from Fort Pierce City Hall, in between Orange Avenue and Avenue A. Our phone number is 772-464-3598. Call me with any questions or concerns. All my best, Joanne. Joanne's Nutrition World, now open from 11 to 3, Monday through Saturday. Call 464-3598. This is WPSL Port St. Lucie, the talk of the Treasure Coast. Welcome back to Joanne's World of Nutrition. Once again, here's Joanne Seeger. Hey, everyone. Thank you for joining us this morning. I have the pleasure of having my daughter, Elena, with me. She's 10 years old, and uh, she's always been at the store since birth, and I love having her on my radio show with me. All right, Elena, you ready for the second half of the show? You can put this mic a little closer to you. All right, so... um. I want to let my listeners know, um, you know, I do have a, even though I expanded the store and we have the wellness center, which has, you know, blood analysis. Now we're doing Menla body scans, infrared sauna, massage, all that good stuff. Um, the supplement side is a little small. So I am trying my best to honor everyone's feelings about uh, the virus and social distancing sometimes is a little hard inside there. So not only am I offering free shipping still, but I'm also offering curbside pickup. I am lucky enough to have a rear entrance. So if someone wants to just pull their car up, I can just bring their items right out to them. Uh, You know, it's a little credit card swap or cash, whatever works for them. So if you don't want to come in, um, no big deal. I'll make it convenient and easy for you and get your products right to your hand. So again, I'm doing the best I can. Um, I hope everyone can be patient with the situation and hopefully everyone stays well uh, during these uh, challenging times. All right, so we're talking today, in case anyone's just tuning in, the top five things you can do for your health for both adults and children. I thought Elena would be the perfect advocate for children's health. She's definitely heard mommy preach and lecture enough over the years. Um, but we're real. We're real family, you know. Um, you know, we definitely eat sweets. We partake in some of the things we shouldn't, um, but we try to have balance. We try to do a lot of the good stuff to offset, um, you know, what sometimes the damaging things can do. Some weeks we're better at it than others. Um, but I know, you know, with the virus and everything and homeschooling, we've definitely... Um, 
made choices that maybe weren't the best for our health. So we're trying to get back on track, and this show is going to be the beginning of that. All right, so we're talking about sleep. That's definitely one of the things that have gotten affected greatly. You know, no critical time to wake up in the morning to get kids to school, so all of a sudden... You know, we're watching Netflix until late. We're, you know, scrolling social media, you know, and we're just not keeping a bedtime. And Elena, bedtime, do you think that if someone gets more sleep and stays in a nice pattern of sleep, would that make them healthier and stronger or weaker and sicker? Healthier and stronger and also help them grow. That's right. I forgot to even mention that. Good point. Hey, that wasn't rehearsed. Look at that. <laughs> but yeah, make you grow. Do you know while you sleep is when all the regeneration happens in your human body. So at night is when your bones do grow and you use most of your minerals. So um, a lot happens while you sleep. Isn't it crazy? Yes. So so that's a really good point. So if you want your brain to grow, because you know it's still growing now, I know you think you know everything, but you're going to know more, and your brain's going to grow with it. So your eyesight, your heart, your liver, your kidneys, your bones, these all are going to keep um, getting better and adapting to your bigger body, and super important. So again, I can't stress enough, that a minimum, minimum for anybody um, that has a child under 17 is 10 hours a night. That's a minimum um, with younger children up to 12 hours. So um, I'm thinking, Elena, the first step is to make a bedtime, right? Like we always have bedtime for children. Adults need a bedtime too. Do you know that? Yeah. Right? Because what happens if mommy goes to bed too late and doesn't get enough sleep? What happens to my mood? You can tell everyone I won't be embarrassed. She gets grumpy. Grumpy, right? <laughs> A little cranky and grumpy. I can't imagine you I getting know. Grumpy. Not sweet me. Yeah, so so really, and not only that, but unfortunately, us alcohol, I mean, us oh, <laughs> us alcohol, us adults, Elena, sometimes <laughs> we use alcohol to help us go to sleep. Um, it's a real common thing. It's been done for a long time now. We have some wine or some cocktails. And you know what happens when we drink alcohol before we go to bed? You go Do you to know? Sleep? We go to sleep, but we don't go to sleep well. We kind of get knocked out, but a few hours later we wake up. We're dehydrated. We have um, to drink a we, lot of water. A lot of water, right? And so it's not really benefiting us. We think it is because we look at it as um, it's like a dependency that we need this to fall asleep. But really, it's not giving us better quality sleep, and it's affecting our health in a negative way. So if someone has that pattern of drinking alcohol to help them go to sleep, can you think of something that they can do that's healthier instead of drinking alcohol? And I'm putting you on the spot. We didn't practice <laughs> this one, but just tell me what you think. So, well, you could probably drink, I don't know. Uh, don't, don't have sugar before you go to bed because... Then okay, you wait, you're getting into the I next topic. <laughs> all right, it's okay. Don't be confused. So what do we all drink as a family in hot water every night to go to sleep? We drink tea. Right. So you can have some nice herbal tea, mm -hmm. maybe read a book, okay? Um, and magnesium. Magnesium tea is what we always have done for you kids and adults. Magnesium is great to help you sleep. Um, there's lots of flavors that health food stores sell in a brand called Calm. There's cherry and raspberry and lemon and orange, um, or even just plain if you don't want flavor. Magnesium does 200 different functions in the human body, but the most important is just relaxing those muscles, helping you feel calm, and putting you in a nice, deep, restorative sleep. And it won't dehydrate you like alcohol does, so you're not cranky the next morning. So really important. Um, another really good one, and I see all over Facebook that people are giving this to their children, so I wanted to put some rules out there. <laughs> um, so melatonin. Melatonin is getting more and more popular. You can find it not only in health food stores, but really everywhere. Now, melatonin 
is definitely getting affected by the technology we're using. They show that where it used to go um, start depleting in our body at the age of 35, now because of blue light and technology, it's starting to um, happen in early years, like between 10 and 15, um, melatonin deficiency is already showing up. Melatonin is what sets our sleep rhythms, our sleep cycles. And it's really critical to go into a nice deep sleep. So then you get the regeneration, like Elena mentioned, you grow, you get stronger, and your body just fixes whatever damage happened during the day. Well, <clears throat> melatonin, if you use it for a child, <coughs> If you use it for a child, you definitely want to do a very low dose. They even make melatonin creams that you can rub just a tiny bit on the bottom of your um, of your feet. So if you have a, a, a little one, you know, first you want to check for other reasons why the child might not be sleeping. Is the room free of any synthetic smells? Make sure you have no room fresheners, any synthetic uh, essential oil diffusers, uh, plug-ins. Um, make sure the air is clean and being filtered properly. Make sure the temperature is okay. Like we're gonna go into sugar consumption next, but make sure they're not loaded up on any empty calories and their bodies are just hyper and wired from that and they need to digest them. So first look into those obvious things before you, what I call drug the child to go to sleep. Um, <laughs> melatonin, honestly, um, it's not a drug and it is sold everywhere, but it still can act like one. So you wanna be responsible and take it seriously and so again, you can start with a very low dose cream and then do one milligram. I hear people telling um, me that they're giving their children gummies and like two of them a day that equal 10 milligram. That's way too much and it could give them vivid nightmares. Um, so you need to be very careful. Now as an adult, we're much more deficient. So we have a little bit more room to play with and we're more intuitive about our sleep patterns are ready. So if we're having nightmares that are disturbing our sleep, we know right away to back up or stop using it altogether. Like for me, my dose is three milligrams. If I do three milligrams, I feel great, I sleep well, and it also has anti-aging benefits, um, a lot of great things if used properly. So definitely get into a good pattern with sleep, set a time to go to bed, so Elena, do you think, um, like if so kids have to wake up, like you guys are waking up for camp in the morning, so about at 6.45, 7. So do you think like 8.30 would be a reasonable time to start getting ready for bed and brush your teeth and start the night? Yeah. Okay. So what are some tips? So you, know, you mentioned the music, okay, some white fan noise, um, pushing technology away, and also to... Um, you know, just no distractions, right? Yeah. Okay, so you're going to do that tonight because the whole audience is listening. So you're, you know, you're making a commitment. Well, tonight I'm going to go to my dad's house. Oh, <laughs> okay. So I think daddy's listening to the show. You want to say hi to daddy? Hi, dad. Okay, so so he's listening. So what time are you going to go to bed? Tell him on the microphone. I don't know because... Uh, see, look, she's already <laughs> making excuses. He, 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 he yeah. Her stay tomorrow, up. yeah. <laughs> tomorrow I don't really have to wake up early like the, all the other days. Okay, so we'll, let's call it 930. That's okay. like a summertime <laughs> time. And that's what happens. We, we think about the next morning and what time we have to wake up and then we'll go to bed later. But it is really important that we set a set time every night no matter what happens the next day so that way your body can really get used to that cycle. So try to get your kids within a half hour mark the cycle that stays the same no matter where they're going, if they're going to the other parent or to a friend's house, it stays um, consistent. You could do a time limit. Yeah, say that again? You could do a time limit. A time limit. Oh, you mean on technology? Well, we're going to go into that in just a couple minutes. But the next thing is. What is, th I, I really think this is the most important thing with kids' health af af yes. after, you know, I consider everything else. So what is number four? Eat less sugar. Okay, I think you should say that one more time really loud. Eat 
less sugar. Yay. And <laughs> should just children eat less sugar or everyone on the planet? This is not Nobody a trick eats question. Nobody less sugar. Yeah, yeah, but everyone should eat less sugar, right? Yeah. It doesn't matter if they're little, big. Yeah. Or if they live in Africa or if they live in the United States, right? <laughs> yep. Well, I'm saying that because there's only a few things that humans agree with when it comes to diet and lifestyle. And the one most important is not to eat too much sugar, right? Yes. Okay. Yes, so right. tell me, kids, how much should they eat a day? Kids 12 to 18 should have less. Not 12. Uh, it says 12. <laughs> it's, uh, it's okay. Kids 2 to 18 should have less than 25 grams a day. Okay, 25 grams. So some listeners might be like, what's 25 grams of sugar? I have no idea. So let's reference a glass of juice. So a regular glass of juice, how many grams of sugar is in that? 24. 24? Yeah. For a little small glass of juice? Yes. Okay. So a you little small can of Coca-Cola is 50. That's right. That's, That's right. That's a lot. That's a lot. So uh, how many again are they supposed to have a day? 25. 25. And a small little glass of regular juice without added sugar has how much? 24 grams. Okay. Elena, do you know that a lot of mommies and daddies think that it's okay to give their kids juice? So I'm hoping they listen to this show and spread the news. So Cliff just mentioned soda, but you know what else is a problem that kids are drinking? Energy drinks. Energy drinks. How much does mommy hate energy drinks? <laughs> wow, you like energy drinks. The isogenics one? Oh, oh, thank you for promoting one of my <laughs> products. I love it. She just did a promotion they I didn't pay more, for. They learn more than you think, don't That's they? That's right. So <laughs> Elena is referencing my energy drinks I sell at mommy's store, and that's isogenics, which guess what, Elena? What? Guess how many sugar grams are in mommy's isogenic energy drinks? I don't know. Four grams. Four grams? Four grams, <laughs> right? And no artificial colors or sweeteners. Do you know the favorite one that you love, the blue one? Do you Which know what the blue one? color comes from? Do you know? Horse? Horse? No. <laughs> okay, we're, we're going to go over this later. No, the blue color for the isogenics energy drinks, oh, which is drinks. full of electrolytes and minerals, is made from spirulina. So blue-green algae makes the beautiful blue color. So oh. that way for people that are used to drinking that junky Gatorade and all those drinks that I absolutely hate. It's blue kombucha. Yeah, well, it's like that, but not a fermented product, but it's for energy, meaning... When, when, Elena, when people use the word energy drinks, they usually mean products that are full of caffeine or sugar. Um, so the isogenics one isn't. That's more of like an electrolyte drink that's full of minerals and electrolytes to replace. So if you do feel weak or tired, especially if you sweat, it replaces those. But energy drinks are full of just caffeine and sugar. Um, and that's really, really bad, right? Yeah. All right. So um, I want to also make mention, what's another thing that parents usually think is super healthy but also has a lot of sugar? Milk. Milk products. And flavor milk. Okay. Now, what do we usually drink instead of milk? We drink organic almond milk. Organic or almond milk. Or we make milk. our own. Yeah, but we make homemade almond milk. So one of the reasons that we, so I try to advocate no dairy for the most part because the dairy that we have supplied to us in all our supermarkets usually um, is homogenized, pasteurized, um, it's processed. So all that's left is a very hard to digest white substance that does have sugar. So how many grams are in a little glass of milk? Fourteen. 14 grams. So the problem is, so if someone's starting with um, a bowl of cereal, a glass of milk, you know, they might already fill their grams of sugar a day. How many grams of sugar should they have a day? 25. Yeah. And you know what gets me upset, Elena? What? Is pediatricians say, okay, 25 grams of sugar f for the ages between 2 and 18. Is a two-year-old as big as your brother? No. Right? Big difference, right? Yeah. 
Okay, so you got this. Okay, so let's use um, Gabe as a, a little boy that is uh, friends with our family. So he's this little tiny boy. Okay, he's supposed to have 25 grams, and then your big brother, who's almost six foot tall, he's supposed to have 25. Something's wrong with this story, isn't it? It seems weird, kids, right? Little kids like that should have less. Right. Common sense. <laughs> so we need to use our common sense. Um, the reason that pediatricians many, many years ago thought, um, you know, to do like the milk and the juice is they were thinking about the basic food pyramid. Okay, you know, do a glass of milk, do a glass of orange juice, you know, um, but they were being fed this information by the people that were producing these food products. So it really is a system that is broken. So you need to use your common sense. Now, what's something that um, like, okay, oh, I get, let's talk about the Italian ices, okay? okay yeah. So during July 4th, we went away, right? Yeah. We're, uh, you know, doing the whole beach thing, so we're hot. So we said, okay, let's do Italian ices for a treat. Yep. And how many grams were in those tiny little cups of Italian ices? The ones with the artificial? Yep. Uh, that was 32 grams. 32 grams of sugar per one ice. Now, yes. no pressure. But how many ices would you like to consume? Like, could you like during a hot summer day? Yeah. Uh, probably about two. Two at least, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I've seen you kids, if we weren't looking, could polish off probably four. They just seem so innocent because <laughs> the labels, you know, look so like they put pictures of watermelons and cherries. So good. But it's all full of artificial color. And what's the color I always tell you kids to stay away from? Red. Red, and what's the second color? Blue. Red and blues. <laughs> Very dangerous for children with hyperactivity, okay? Yep. So you definitely want your kids to stay away from artificial. So a little tip is I know it's hot and the kids are craving something. They're splashing around the pool or going in the ocean. They do, like Luigi's makes Italian ices that are lemon-flavored, so almost clear color. They have 20 grams of sugar and they don't have the artificial color. So again, not a perfect system, but it's definitely Better. less sugar. So I definitely want to make time for tip number five. So I can't emphasize enough, watch the sugar for your kids, okay? It creeps up on us. Even, you know, white flour, pancakes, waffles, cereal, crackers, it all breaks down to sugar in an instant. So it still counts. All right, so number five, Elena, I know you really hate this topic, but Tell us what's really critical for kids' health. Time on devices. So how much time do you spend on your device? Ten million, quadrillion hours. <laughs> quadrillion <laughs> hours. Yeah, it seems like that, right? I constantly have to remind all you guys, get off your phones, get off your iPads, get off the TV. Like, it's crazy. And Elaine, it's not just me. Do you know mommy and daddies and caretakers everywhere have a problem with children on devices? That's why you need a time on devices. A time limit, right? So what does the American Health Association recommend for kids? Um, Less than two hours a day. Two over hours five. a day. Do you think you can do that? You know, your daddy's listening. I can't. <laughs> you can do it, right? You have to show others it's possible. I, well, I did that one time, but that was only because if I didn't do it, I was going to be in trouble. Okay, if you're going to be in trouble. So, well, that's what parents' jobs are. Sometimes we have to kind of make you do things so you don't hurt yourself. And that's what parents need to understand, that this is no joke, that this is not just about, you know, distracting them so they can eat their dinner or do a chore. Yes. Spending too much time on a device, what part of the body does it hurt? Our brain. Our brain. Do you know? Because your brain is still developing, and yeah. they've actually proven that more than two hours a day, and to be honest, Elena, this study was being very lenient. Yes. There was one study, the biggest study, that had thousands of kids involved. It said two hours a week. A week. And this one's saying two hours a day, so they're being much kinder to children. You said two hours a week. That's yeah, well, said. that's what I try, but it's it seems like it's not working very well, um, especially with homeschooling. You're on devices for homeschooling, yep. so parents need to pay attention to this. 
Now, if they're a little one, so ages two to five, how much time a day? One hour. One hour. You know, it breaks mommy's heart because I see parents now that show little tiny infant babies holding their iPhones to be distracted. Yep. It breaks my heart. <laughs> Do you know that's super dangerous for them, Elena? How can we get mommies and daddies to not be using all these devices near your beautiful little brains? Well, well, like I said, they could uh, do what my friend has. She has. She's only allowed to be on her iPad for four hours. Then her whole iPod shuts down, and then. After another four hours without her iPad, she goes back on for another four hours. It, like, switches. Okay, so isn't that crazy? We're talking about eight hours a day. And do you know what the average child spends a day on their device for real in the United States? No. It's seven hours a day. So your friend is right about average at eight hours. And, and um, four of those hours are singing along to Baby Shark. Doo, 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 doo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, it's crazy. So, And what's worse is sometimes it's very difficult when parents are working or distracted by life or their own devices is we don't see what you're watching. Right. Haven't you and I and I know Daddy and you guys have uh, had a lot of conversations about, um, you know, stranger danger and, yes. and people, um, you know, kind of going into your personal space and asking you personal questions. And you have to be super careful. So there are health risks. There are social risks. Um, there's physical risks. So we need to really pay attention. And your job because you're now you're a smart 10 year old. You also have to share with people this information to teach them, you know, it's better you spend less time on devices. And also, too, they're saying now that the brains, because you guys are on devices so long, are learning how to think the way an Internet thinks, which is you process without really learning social skills and without really getting the whole story. Because the Internet, <laughs> Elena, if you read it on the Internet, does it make it true? No. Right? Anyone can put something on the internet. Yes. Right? And we're going through that right now. You see that all, all over. People are just putting information. We don't know what's real and what's not. And your brain hasn't developed properly enough to know the difference. Sometimes even us adults, we don't know the difference. Um, so, you know, sometimes common sense, especially right now, I feel like it's going out the window. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really critical. Okay, so we just have a minute left, Elena. Do you want to say goodbye to all our listeners and yes. thank you for listening? Yeah, thank you for listening. You want to give a shout out to Scarlett, your stepsister? Yeah, I have. A oh, and you have a new baby sister. <laughs> say hi to both of them. Hi, Scarlett. Hi, Anai. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you, you guys have a great day, Elena. Thank you for being my guest. I'll see you guys You're next awesome. time. All right, everyone. Well, next week, Dr. Ravi is on with me. Have an yep. amazing week. Remember, get some fresh air, drink some water, eat some vegetables, get off your devices, and go to bed. Exercise. Exercise. Yay. All right. Bye. High five, Elena. I love you. You've been listening to Joanne's World of Nutrition, brought to you by Nutrition World in downtown Fort Pierce, directly across US-1 from City Hall in Fort Pierce in the Kras Plaza, formerly known as the Historic Arcade Building. Tune in every Thursday morning in the 10 o'clock hour for Joanne's World of Nutrition on WPSL Port St. Lucie, Google Home, Alexa, and your TuneIn app.